Welcome to the High Performance CEO Show, your exclusive insight into the strategies and success habits of the world's top CEOs. I'm your host, Sebastian Schieke, entrepreneur, mentor, and business angel. Prepare to grow your business, enhance your leadership skills, and thrive in today's world. Let's dive in. Hey, welcome to another episode of the High Performance CEO Show. Today I'm talking to Brendan Barnum. Brendan is from Phoenix and uh, he's a serial entrepreneur and the CEO of HOA, the Homeowner Association Referral Network. And a sing while a single dad in 97, Brendan was an early technology innovator featuring real estate property listings from realtors he partnered with and promoted. After learning that art and science of referrals, Prandom increased his annual income back then 10 times in within 18 months from 20k to 200. And since then, he has closed over 500 million in transaction by referral and has found multiple online referral platforms and networks, connecting more than 5 million members in 195 countries. That's an amazing achievement. Welcome to the show, Prandom. Thank you, Sebastian. I have a son named Sebastian, so that's a special name for me. Great. Uh, we already talked in this, in our pre-chat, that we have quite a connection. We have um, relatives in Germany. I am wanted to come to Phoenix and uh, probably will in the next couple of months. So, um, I mean, your, your um, history is amazing, uh, a lot of achievement. You wrote a couple of books and what sort of, I see as a through line are referrals. Yeah. So can you maybe um, explain in a few words to everyone who's not really sure what a referral is, what in your definition a referral is and how you can use it to uh, grow your business? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Sebastian. So referrals is a recommendation. When somebody recommends somebody else for a service or a product, that word of mouth recommendation is huge because 90% mm -hmm. of human beings say we trust recommendations from people we know. And yeah. when somebody is referred to you, they're 400% more likely to buy what you're offering because of that trust transfer that takes place from the beginning. Yeah. I mean, business is all about trust. And uh, yeah, as, as you said, if someone tells, hey, Prendam is an amazing guy, you should talk to him and uh, um, he's probably able to help you, then um, there is um, a higher likelihood that uh, this person will engage with you than uh, someone sees a post from you on, on a social network. Yeah? But I mean, can we put this into a system? Can we have a right. structured process? Because I mean, some people, I honestly, uh, some people are maybe a bit shy, you know, they think, yeah, I you know, I... I shouldn't, I shouldn't ask my client, don't know what he thinks, and maybe he's not 100% happy with what I'm doing. And so you miss these opportunities. No? I mean, I did. If, if you don't have systems, then um, we not really follow through. And um, this, if this is really so powerful, we're not u utilizing it. So have you, I mean, what system would you recommend? Well, first and foremost, you're absolutely right. Ivan Meisner, who started BNI, he says 98% of businesses rely on referrals, yet only 3% have a system for referrals. Mm -hmm. So you're spot on. And you know, when it comes to B2B pros, business to business sales, 84% starts with the referral. So if you're in the B2B world, you better be yep. getting a, a warm introduction to that decision maker or else it's a long, long slog to get somebody to eventually trust you with a, you know, hundred thousand million, ten million dollar decision, right? Yeah. As far as systems, we teach to automate the ask. We actually teach the art of the ask, but because this is for high performing CEOs, we recommend that within your business that you integrate and automate the ask for referrals. When you deliver amazing results for your clients that net promoter score goes up uh -huh. and they are much more inclined to refer you. So add it into your email signatures, add it into your email sequences and your follow-up funnels, have a mailer, a direct mailer that goes out. 
it added into your invoices and your receipts. And through yep. that, you can automate the ask. Now, we train people to learn the art of the ask. Would you like to know the art of the ask, Sebastian? Well, obviously, yeah. That's why you're <laughs> speaking. Of course. So th what you said is true. Most people feel uncomfortable asking for referrals. And the mm -hmm. reason is because they're trying to sell rather than trying to serve. So first of all, what we teach is come from that servant mentality, have the mindset of how can I help you, which is all referrals is all about, is trying to help somebody solve a challenge or live a better life, right? Now we uh -huh. teach the art of the ask, which helps people feel comfortable on both ends of the conversation. And basically what you want to do is when you're sitting down with a client, they've just chosen to do business with you, buy your product, buy your service. Before you let them out the door, what you want to do is say, Sebastian, can I ask you a quick favor? Now, most people, when they're asked for a favor, are going to say, yes, absolutely, or maybe tell me more, right? But you're going to oh. get uh, almost 100% of people that'll say, yeah, absolutely. At that point, what you want to do is say, by the way, I work primarily by referral. So what I'd like to do is wow you with our service so that you're blown away and thrilled with the product or service we provide. Once I do that, would it be okay if I ask you for referrals later on? Uh, sorry, you asked us before you engage with a customer, yeah, before you start delivering uh, your Once product Once they sign up for your service, before you yeah. start delivering it, mm -hmm. right? So they've already said yes, they, they've made the buying decision. So they've already said mm -hmm. yes. Now you're basically saying, Sebastian, look, we're going to wow you with the quality of our care, the, the service, the speed, the communication, whatever it is that separates you and makes your business great. Then you say, once I wow you, would it be okay if I ask you for referrals later? Now, because you're not putting them on the spot right now, they're comfortable and you're comfortable asking them. Because basically all you've done is say, hey, I'm going to do a great job and you're going to love what you've just bought. Make sense? Uh, completely. And you already saw in the seat uh, and uh, you put us in their mind and they can start thinking um, huh? in their subconscious mind, who could be a potential fit for Prendam in this case, you know? Right. Uh, I think it's it's very clever. Yeah, you don't, uh, I mean, often when we ask uh, in the end, I mean, you deliver it and you ask it in the end and then it's, yeah, yeah, I think about it. But then they sort of, um, yeah, go on and, and uh, get on with their with their life and they forget it. But if you do this before you start serving, then they already have this, this in the subconscious mind, this this question, which is always working and always looking for an answer. Right. Right. <laughs> then combined with your amazing delivery, uh, they come, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Brandon asked me and, hey, um, Ralph is a good person, you know, let's connect with them. It's an, and it's they've a, already it's agreed awesome... to, Sebastian. They've said yeah. yes. Yeah. At that point, mm -hmm. you've set the stage. That's step one. There's three steps, right? That's yeah. step one. And everything you just said is right on. All of that is working in your favor. They're thinking about it. As they're going along their day, they think, oh, this could be a great fit for Sebastian, right? And so yeah. you're going to get referrals now because you've already set the stage. But now what you want to do is listen for the referral triggers. And the referral triggers could literally be, wow, Sebastian, this is so great. I feel so good. I love it. It's amazing. Mm. You've helped me save so much. You've helped me make so much. I look sexy. I look pretty. Whatever it is that you deliver with yeah. your product or service, right? You're creating that wow experience. Or it could just be simply, thank you so much. I'm so glad that I chose to use you. Whatever that expression of appreciation is, that's step mm -hmm. two. Listen for the referral triggers. And we actually teach in our deep dive, we teach questions that will elicit that answer that you're looking for, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Hey, Sebastian, on a scale of, of one to 10, where 10 is awesome, how are we doing for you right now? Oh, it's a 10. I'm so glad you feel that way. I love, we love helping people like you get this result. And so remember mm -hmm. early on, I said that we were going to wow you with our service. Well, it sounds like you're pretty happy and we love helping people like you feel like this. So who else can we help? Is there anybody in your company, your clients, your family, your friends, whatever that is that's appropriate for your business, who can we help? You help them, right? And basically yeah. that's the third step, which is to ASK to GET. And when you do it in that three-step process, 
set the stage, listen for the referral triggers, and then ASK to GET, everybody is comfortable and you're going to boost your results. Yeah, simple things, no? But um, you have to do them. No? Um, system. It's a system. Yeah, it, it, That's what you're saying. Yeah. And if you don't have a system, we, um, yeah, we either forget or we maybe only do part of it uh, and it all falls apart. Yeah, But putting it like everything in business or life you know if you have a system if you have a system for working out then you do this in the morning you, you put your your clothes there in the evening you get ready <laughs> you uh, wake up in the morning and there's no question you pick up your shoes you go for a run that's right but if you don't prepare then uh, you not follow through it's the same uh, in business the same with <laughs> referrals yeah it really so is i'm this, glad you said that yeah. because we use that analogy all the time we have kind of a coaching program within hoa.com mm -hmm. where we teach people how to boost their business by referrals. And we literally say that exact same thing, Sebastian. We say, look, it works when you work it. But if you don't mm -hmm. go to the gym, you're not going to see the results, right? We're like yeah. the gym and we've got the personal trainers, but you got to show up and do the work if you want to get the game. That's what I also always tell my clients. Um, we can only do so much, you know, give them all the um, inspiration, the knowledge, uh, the little kick, uh, but uh, they have to act, you know, they have to do the work. That's right. So tell me about this homeowner association and this referral network for home service professionals. Um, yeah. What does it uh, mean? I mean, um, I'm from Europe, so for us, the homeowner association is quite new. So right. how does it work and, and what kind of professionals are using your referral method there? Uh, great question. So in the United States, 53% of all homeowners live in an HOA, a homeowner association. And what it is, is basically in the neighborhood, it's a neighborhood that's agreed to live by a certain set of rules. And two thirds of them hire a property management company to look over mm -hmm. the community to make sure that, you know, there's no pink houses, that there's no weeds growing in the yards, that there's no trucks on blocks or boats out there that everybody agrees to operate mm -hmm. by the same set of rules and they manage the community which then helps increase and support the value of the property so that's the good part the bad part is oftentimes hoas turn into the community cops meaning that's they write just, yeah. tickets because you left your garbage can out for too long and so now you got to pay 25 dollars and so they're oh, kind of community you. cops and and so anyway, that's how homeowner associations work in the U.S. I don't think you have anything like that in Germany, do you? No, we don't. I mean, we, um, I mean, I, I, I own an apartment, an apartment block. So yeah. uh, we have rules um, between the, the eight owners, you know, we have a sort of code of conduct uh, and, uh, but uh, we don't have this within a community. So that's. The well, difference. it's pretty much the same thing, right? It's a, conda, mm -hmm. a code of conduct within the neighborhood, and each of the homeowners pay money in either each month or each year for the homeowner association to manage like the landscaping, um, any common areas, right? There might be a gate, there might be a waterfall, there might be lights that need help. You know, here in Phoenix, we do some fun stuff around here for different holidays. We put up flags to honor our veterans for our, our um, Independence Day, Veterans Day, yeah. Memorial Day. So we do different things and everybody puts in a little so that the community can do a lot. But what we're doing at HOA.com is we started the company as the Home Owner Alliance, HOA. Mm -hmm. And we had the domain, thehomeowneralliance.com. It was too long to fit on the side of a bus. So we were able to acquire HOA.com. What we're building is an online real estate ecosystem that's kind of like Nextdoor meets Angie's List meets Zillow. Now, those web applications may not mean much to you in, in Germany, but basically we're creating online community pages for every neighborhood in America to connect those communities and to serve the homeowners better. And then we connect mm -hmm. them to professionals they can trust. So we have a referral network of real estate agents, insurance agents, painters, plumbers, mortgage, financial planners, all of the professionals who serve homeowners. And then we also have the Zillow component is home sales and home valuations. So we create an automated home valuation report 
so that every homeowner knows if the value of their home went up or went down every single month. I like this idea connecting freshness to um, yeah homeowners because hey you not often hire a um, painter or a plumber you know you you need them when uh, you are in a situation where you are <laughs> yeah where you have a an outage or, or whatever and then you I, need solutions quick you know you don't have the time to evaluate the market and uh, do an in-depth research and uh, if there's a a trusted um, network of professionals which are um, sort of pre-vetted, uh, it really makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, very, uh, and if you do this on a global scale within um, the US, there's a lot of power behind, you know, this, uh, really? this network. Well, and yeah. right now you're looking through the lens of a homeowner and everything you just mm -hmm. said is accurate, right? A homeowner is, they want to spend as little time and energy and quite frankly, money to find the right person yeah. to do the job the right, the first time, right? Now, think about it from the, the professional's perspective. What we find is that most of these professionals are really good at what they do. They're a great electrician or plumber or painter. They usually suck at the marketing and yeah. they're typically out there building their business by themselves. We call them a lone wolf or a lone ranger. And we mm -hmm. teach them that the most successful companies and professionals build a team that builds their dream because they're constantly seeing opportunities to refer their fellow professionals. And we say, rather than being all by yourself, when there's a great quote from Zig Ziglar, it, mm -hmm. says, it says, you can get everything in life you want when you help enough other people get what they want. So when you start with service, and you refer your partners and you cross promote each other, everyone wins together. Yeah. 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 yeah it's a give, give, get, you know, give before you ask and uh, right. provide value. And then um, it will come back to you. Yeah. Definitely. So, I mean, this works amazingly for people who are for business owners or entrepreneurs who, who have clients and build on this um, client base. What about um, people who are starting their business, you know, who don't uh, have a huge list of customers, yes. yeah, but who also want to somehow use referrals? So what can they do? Well, so we we guide them to ravingreferrals.com. Raving Referrals is the name of my book, right? So we teach them the art and the science of getting raving referrals. And I was fortunate enough to be mentored, as you mentioned, when I got in the mortgage business. I was a single dad at the time. I was making 20,000 mm -hmm. a year. And when I got custody of my son, I knew I had to make a change because I bounced my mortgage check. I couldn't afford daycare and my mortgage all at the same time. So I, I had to make a change. Good leverage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you couldn't do it. So I got in the mortgage business and I had somebody yeah. that taught me the art of creating referral partnerships. So if mm -hmm. you're just starting out or maybe you have a younger organization and the people that are in your organization that you're leading are newer in the business. Maybe you run an insurance agency, you're working with new real estate agents. The reality is that everyone has a network, but most mm -hmm. people haven't formalized their, their network. So the first thing that we do is we teach them how to approach the people that already know, like, and trust them and actually start to formalize a referral partnership We call it the referral partner blueprint. We teach it in the raving referrals book and we, we give it away for free at HOA.com slash blueprint. Interesting. So there's also a system behind in, uh, starting, starting off and, uh, creating probably, yeah, getting customers and turning in to turn them into raving fans and, and referrals. Absolutely. There's a system for creating referral partnerships with mm -hmm. people who are serving your perfect prospect every day. Now at HOA.com, we serve homeowners, but some of your audience is listening and they serve business owners. What we do mm -hmm. is we help you identify who are the people who are serving your perfect prospects every day. Maybe you're a business coach, right? And you only want a C-level person or whatever your industry is, target yeah. those who are champions in those organizations that you're looking to win business with and add as much value to them as possible. You are also um, quite into networking events and uh, yep. connecting um, with um, yeah, other business owners. 
tell me a bit about how can you, I mean, often these networking events are a bit awkward, you know, you, yeah. um, you don't know anyone, you go there, everyone is handing out their business card, everyone is showing off, you know, and oh, I'm, 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 I'm the master of X, I'm the ma master of Z, and, and, and it often it, it's intimidating people. You know, yes. uh, they feel, they feel, they feel not, not welcome. They feel like, oh, right. this is a big uh, competition. Uh, everyone is only there to, to get business. And um, how can you turn a networking event into something fun, yeah. effective and uh, welcoming for, for everyone? Well, a couple of different suggestions. Number one, bring a buddy with you. Never go to a networking event by yourself. Okay. Mm. I've found what's been successful for me is if I'm going to an event, I want to invite other people to the event. Now, the reality is not everybody's going to say yes, but you still get credit because you're offering them value. You're inviting them out to something that's cool or an event that they're going to find value in. Even if they say no, your capital yeah. rises with them just from inviting them. Now, if they say yes, now you can work the room together. Be crystal clear on exactly who you're looking to meet. Most people just go to a networking event and they don't have a plan. They don't have a system. We teach a system for our networking event. We teach systems for everything because that's just mm -hmm. how the, the world works. But one mm -hmm. of the things that we teach you, number one, is once you have your networking buddy and you're going to that event together, tell them who you want to meet. And then as you guys split up and you work the room together, you're going to meet people that they want to meet and you can introduce that person to them and help speed up the process and vice versa. They're going to bring people to you and now you're creating that trust factor because that person they've just met is endorsing you. They're raving about you. The other thing you want to do, Sebastian, is you want to get to meet the people that are running the event because they're the authority in the room and they typically yeah. know the people that you want to meet. So let's say you wanted to meet a CPA, just as an example. What we recommend is that when you go to that event, introduce yourself to the, the host or hostess, the people that are running the event, and let them know, hey, just so you know, I'm really here to meet this type of a person, a CPA, because I oh. can really add a lot of value and do a lot of business with them. They typically know who's in the room, and they can make those introductions. Oh, you know what? I've got to introduce you to Jeff. I've got to introduce you to Jane. Or as people check in and they naturally have a conversation about, oh, what business are you in? And they say, I'm a CPA. Guess what? Now they're connecting you and they're making that match so that everyone feels more comfortable. Yeah, I completely uh, agree. I mean, I also run Networking event, I run it on a, on a virtual basis, yep. uh, one uh, times a month uh, on LinkedIn, getting, um, yeah, interesting people together, yeah, yeah. often uh, having a, a, a certain mm -hmm. topic. So the last couple of week, months, we, we focus on AI and yeah. uh, you can foster a lot of uh, conversation. Yeah. I mean, uh, in, in virtual, you can do small breakouts. So I send people off into breakouts where they meet and uh, introduce each other. But it's it's there's no selling, you know, and this is so right. important. Yeah, there's no um, no focus on sales. It's only focus on making connect. And I mean, if you meet the right person, then sale will follow. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you get on with each other, then uh, um, you're likely to do business. But um, if you start off and only uh, hardcore selling your service, then um, yeah, you put people off. So put in the connection and. Uh, um, really focused introduction what you said is uh, is is very important and Didn't and yeah i mean the networking event organizer is the person who uh, knows everyone and connecting with them and asking for for yeah. connections is a clever way to do this and there's the authority think, right they're viewed yeah. as the authority in the room everybody is looking exactly. to that person they know that they know everybody right it's like right. Being uh, uh, cool kids on the table, you know, like in school, you know, Ren is always surrounded with these uh, other kids I want to be part of. Yeah. So absolutely go and, and mingle with them and ask Brendan uh, to uh, get you a seat. Uh, so and serve for yeah, a I mean, right? couple of points. Yeah. Number one, seek to serve. Don't like you're saying, you're not looking yeah. to sell anybody. You're there to serve. So exactly. I always say God gave you two ears and one mouth. So listen 
twice as much as you talk and ask questions. Seek yeah. to be interested rather than interesting. Be more interested in other people, right, than trying to elevate yourself and make yourself look interesting. That's going to happen. You're going to be more interesting by being more interested in them. 100% um, agree. And you put this all in uh, in your books, I right? Did. Yeah. So you have how many how many books? I see so many books on your shelves. Well, um, most of those are mine. Um, my two books that I've written so far are Raving Referrals and Raving Referrals for Dentists. So my mm -hmm. mentor is Mark Victor Hansen, who wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul. This is his latest mm -hmm. book, Ask the Art, the, the Bridge from Your Dreams to Your Thank Destiny. You. Um, he wrote The One Minute Millionaire, which was a brilliant book. If you haven't read this book, you should. This book changed my life. This book okay. actually is how I met Mark. And he told me to run 101 goals. And one of my goals was that I wanted Mark Victor Hansen to write about me in a book by May 28th, 2005. And this book okay. came out on May 31st, 2005. And he wrote three and a half pages about me in that book. So it was like the power of manifestation is amazing. And, you know, Mark's a dear friend. of He is uh, one of our advisors for HOA.com. And he just mm -hmm. called me a few days ago. Amazing man. I'm so blessed to have him in my life. Great. So I definitely um, will uh, check out uh, his books and obviously also your books. How do you see the future of networking, especially now in our more digital and virtual world. So how do you leverage this? Yeah. What I see is that it's, it's an older generation that goes out to events these days. I don't know yeah. if you experienced this or not, but it used to be that I'd see a mix of generations. And ever since COVID, It seems like the younger generation is staying home. Yeah. They prefer to go on social media and just put mm -hmm. out a message to the masses rather than yeah. building relationships. And the ones that are really going to succeed long term are the ones that create relationships. Because I know people for 20 years where they'll open doors for me and do anything for me. And I don't think you're going to get that on social media. So. Number one, invest in people that are going to add value to you and you're going to add value to them. Build those relationships long-term. And then as far as networking, find the events where your perfect prospects hang out. If you're looking to win business, which is usually why people are networking, unless they're looking to get hired to get a job, but find out where your audience lives. You know, Find out where they're hanging out. Is there an association event for the industry that you serve. If so, uh -huh. then you're going to fish in a stocked pond, meaning it's going to be full of your perfect prospects and be much more effective use of your time. The other thing I say, Sebastian, is when you're at an event and you meet somebody, make sure that you schedule your next appointment right then and there. Don't leave that event and say, oh, I've got your business card. I'm going to follow yeah. up with you. What happens is, Very seldom do people actually follow up and follow through and connect. So I always recommend that when you're in a meeting, when you meet somebody interesting, schedule your next appointment right then, where the, whether it's a prospect or a prospective partner, put a time on the calendar right then and there, and that way you're not chasing them after the event. Yeah, it's basically like everything. Uh, when you set a goal, if you take action immediately just a small thing like scheduling something or, or making a call and the likelihood that you achieve this goal is much higher than yeah. uh, putting it off and yeah i do this later yeah and that's right how often have you been on a on an event or met someone and we got a card and we put a card somewhere and then life goes on and yeah a couple of months later you see this card and you're was this was this guy you know I'm, you I'm this, glad uh, you brought up cards because I see one of the other mistakes that young people are making these days is they don't bring a business card with them and I think mm -hmm. it's a mistake they will give me their digital card and have me scan their QR code or their use their NFC chip to post it onto my uh, onto my phone and what happens is as soon as it goes into my phone it goes out of my memory right yes whereas if somebody hands me a business card, then I'm sitting there looking at it. I mean, I've got a stack of them right here. You know, this is the CEO mm -hmm. of a property management company that I met at an event and I keep it right there on my desk because 
I know that I'm going to reconnect with him, right? So uh, very important, in my opinion, that you actually use business cards, have something mm -hmm. physical that after you meet yeah. somebody, they're taking home with them because when they leave that event and they go home at night, they're going to forget about most of the conversations that they had. But the next day, they're going to look down and they're going to see, oh, you know what? There's that professor at Grand Canyon University that is head of the angel funds here in town. I'm going to follow up well, with David and set an appointment. I mean, I have the same with books, actually. So I love reading books on my Kindle because I can do this late at night and I don't disturb anybody. But I have all these books sort of piled up, digitally piled up on my Kindle, and uh, I don't I don't see them anymore. Yeah? So they are somewhere on a digital um, yeah. world. And often now I end up um, buying the book twice. I buy it on yeah. a Kindle, and then I buy it physically, put it in a shelf uh, to see it, you know, to uh, be reminded that, that, hey, there's this amazing book from, from Brendan. I want to revisit, you know. Plus, you and, can give it away. You can pass it on to others. I love giving yes. gift books as gifts because you're mm -hmm. giving the, the gift of knowledge and empowerment. And every time they think of that book, they see it there. Who are they thinking of, Sebastian? They're thinking of you, yeah. right? I also love to introduce other people because when you make an introduction to someone else, every time those two people get together, inevitably you come up, right? They go, oh, have you talked to Brandon lately? Have you talked to Sebastian lately? I love that guy. He's so generous. He's so kind. Whatever that, you know, I love his smile. I love whatever it is. Yeah. They always like, talk about you and it, it creates that mind share that leads to more opportunities and transactions. So in the end, using digital in terms of systems and and maybe tools, but still um, not forgetting physical, real-time, uh, real-life conversation, real-life meetings, uh, physical things like books, uh, business cards, which you can look at, you put on your table, you be reminded of, and otherwise uh, things get, get lost and you miss these opportunities. Uh, and this is what I also experienced uh, a lot. And um, what I also take from this conversation, systems. Systems is basically um, make or break, you know, uh, win or lose. If you don't have a system, then uh, you ha most likely not follow through on a, con on a consistent basis. You might do this once, but um, you're not doing this five or six times because then life gets in the way and you do something else. And, uh, oh, I should have asked for a referral. Yeah, maybe next time. You may have heard this before, Sebastian. It's a little cliche, but I believe systems stands for save yourself time, energy, and money. Right. Yeah. And that's really true. What a system does is it increases productivity and performance. So, you know, again, get the physical business card and then put it into your CRM system. You don't want to only have it sitting in your desk or on your drawer. You also want it in your digital media so that the system is following up for you. So I do both. Well, I have VAs, right? I have not only a system, I have a team. And so what I do yeah. is I just take a snapshot, a photo of their business card, slack it to my VA and record a voice note of the notes about that person. They put it into the CRM, the system. And then they do, they make sure that the follow up happens, whether that's scheduling a meeting, if for some reason I didn't schedule one, or whatever the next step is. Maybe it's just getting them into the funnel so that we introduce them into our ecosystem and into our referral network. Thank you so much for sharing all these very valuable um, ideas and systems. Is there anything else you would like to um, share with the audience before we are wrapping up? Well, the, the last thing is, you know, we talked before we, we got here about bank. And you see here mm -hmm. on, my, oh, yes, exactly. on my bookshelf. Sorry, I forgot. It's all good. There's a book here yeah. called Why They Buy. And bank is mm -hmm. a personality assessment tool. And this is kind of like DISC or Myers-Briggs. But what I love about this is I can use it in the real world. And I didn't create it, but I do use it all the time. Mm -hmm. So what I do is if I'm meeting somebody for the first time, maybe at a networking event, I'll say, yeah. would you like to see a magic trick? And what do you think their answer to that is? Obviously, yeah. Yeah, of course I do. It's intrigue, right? So now you're yeah. like, okay, what is this? And, I, and I'll and i hand them the cards 
and I'll, I'll say, do me a favor, read the information on these cards and then sort mm -hmm. them in order of what's most like you to least like you. That will help me serve you better and save us both time. Okay. So little, and what happens a is questionnaire. Oh yeah. It, and it's actually, yeah. the question is designed to trigger all four codes, right? Mm -hmm. So do me a favor read the information on these cards, sort them in order of what's most like you, it will help me serve you better and save us both time. So it hits all four codes and it takes them about a minute or so to sort the codes and they hand it back to me. And it's like, they've just handed me the keys to their, their safe, right? Because now I uh -huh. understand them. Now what uh -huh. I do is I spend the next minute or two saying, oh, Sebastian, this is so interesting. First and foremost, I see that you're high action. You're a netted out kind of guy, right? You like to get stuff done fast. You love freedom and spontaneity, right? So I'm describing who they've just told me they are. I'm not yeah. guessing. Normally we go out and we're guessing, oh, he's wearing a red shirt, but he's unshaven today. So, right, we make these assumptions about people. I don't like to guess. I like to ask. And what happens is as I describe the different personality code that they've just told me they are it's like instant empathy yeah. and now i can speak it and it builds rapport faster than anything i've ever said seen because the other person is like oh he gets me he understands me and that usually happens in two or three minutes time and now i can customize my conversations and presentations to serve him better and to get the yes because this is also a system that you use for sales. If you understand how your prospect makes buying decisions, now you can give them the information they need to make a wise and informed buying decision fast. I love this. Yeah. I mean, I'm a 95% D, yeah? So this oh, yeah. is why I'm wearing a red shirt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. And I actually put on this beard uh, after I basically arrived in New Zealand and my kids my kids literally uh, stole my shaver, you know, and put it away. <laughs> and I said, Dad, please, please keep this beard, you know, it's it's amazing. I said, yeah, I'm not sure, you know. So I was playing around a bit and yeah. uh, now I quite like it, yeah. And uh, huh. um, it's uh, um, uh, it's a nice uh, physic, uh, nice change. Yeah. Um, I love this... Uh, do, do is this does this also ex I mean I'm I'm a I'm a disc certified uh, person so I use this a lot for my clients yeah. right but um, having a more streamlined version uh, which they can fill out in three minutes is uh, is really helpful so do you also have a digital version of that yeah you can go to knowyourcode.us and you basically mm -hmm. just see the cards online you sort them drag and drop them into the order. And then once you opt in, it will send you a report of exactly how you are. But right. what I love about this, like I use DISC as a CEO, I've used DISC for years, but I've never yeah. once heard somebody say, oh, you're being so conscientiousness right now. Like those words just don't work in the real world. No. These no. words are action, blueprint, yeah. oh. knowledge nurturing and these are words that we really use to describe people in the real world so what i found is that i couldn't get disc to really take i had to it took me like 18 months before i felt like i had mastered it it took like 18 mm. minutes before i felt like i had mastered this and i can yeah. use these cards in the real world with disc again i'm a big disc fan i think it has a huge pl a place we use it in our hiring in our management process exactly for yeah. sales we use bank because I can use this in the real world and I can understand who somebody is within one to two minutes tops and oh. build rapport faster than anything I've ever seen. Great. Brandon, thank you so much. Um, this episode is uh, packed with um, amazing knowledge and ideas. Um, I'm really glad that uh, we both met. Also, we couldn't exchange physical business cards because we are on two sides uh, in the world. Um, I um, definitely uh, believe that we will stay in touch and uh, our um, paths will cross again. And when I'm in uh, Phoenix, uh, then I will definitely knock on your door and uh, hopefully you have a coffee for me. I love it. Absolutely, Sebastian. Yeah.
Thank you so much. And, and I just want to acknowledge you for your leadership, right? I know you're you're doing this to build your business, but you're also making a difference more than you even know. There's people that are listening to this right now that are going to take away golden nuggets and they're going to put it into their business and you're changing lives that you can't even see. So thank you for what you're doing. It's important and it makes a difference. Thanks, Brendan. I great to have you. Thank you for tuning into the High Performance CEO Show. I'm your host, Sebastian Schieke, and it's been a pleasure serving you. Please subscribe to our show on your favorite platform and leave us a review. Your support helps us reach more listeners and create a bigger impact. Check out our website, sebastianschieke.com, for additional resources. Until next time, be bold, be exceptional, be outstanding, be a leader. Be a leader.